G'day, Dylan O'Donnell from the Byron Bay Observatory here. Let me ask you something. Do you read books? Are you a true intellectual? Well, I've been thinking about this lately, partly because I've been putting together a book, but also because of one of my favorite books and a few actually a few of my favorite books i want to talk to you about astronomy books and what's happening in the book industry right now something weird is going on let's talk about books this is one of my favorite books astronomy and the year 2024 australia um, it gets published every year i've had a few photos in it over the years as well um, which i appreciate but what makes this book great is that it's a quick reference that I can go to month to month to find out what's going on in the sky without looking up my planetarium app or something like that. Maybe it's a bit old school, maybe I'm an old man yelling at the cloud, but it's nice to have this on my desk and to refer to it, and I refer to it a lot. Uh, but this year, there was something that concerned me in the introduction, and I quaff, the end is nigh. The world is changing, we are aging, and the printed word is diminishing. Blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on, but it closes by saying, we haven't made a final decision on whether to continue with our 2025 edition. This could be the death knell for one of my favorite books, my favorite astronomy books. Now, I don't buy a lot of books. I'm not really a book kind of guy. I definitely embrace digital. I have a Kindle. Kindle's not very good for textbooks, so there are some astronomy textbooks I use. Uh, but generally, I can, I sort of get it. I'm of that generation where I do prefer YouTube, I do prefer online communities. I get a lot of my information online these days. But there are still some books that I love. The other one that concerns me is this one. Oh shit! Australian Sky and Telescope. It sort of went the same way. Our last issue was six months ago, I think, now. Um, the magazine is dead. This was the Australian offshoot of the American Sky and Telescope magazine, a massive brand, and for some reason they couldn't commercially continue. They sort of toyed with the idea of going digital, but I think it was a bit of a case of too little too late. It wasn't going to work out. So Australian Sky and Telescope has gone. Now I've done a video on Burnham's Celestial Handbook. That's one that um, maybe sent the author crazy just because of the sheer volume of work, but also because of some unfortunate personality conflicts at work and um, the Lowell Observatory fully acknowledges his role today. They saw the video and um, I believe there's been many updates since and for historical reasons I've got my own copy of that. Other books I really like are Warren Keller's Inside Pix Insight, especially getting started with Pix Insight this was my go-to. I often refer to it as the Bible. I think you should have a copy of this. Skywatcher sent me a physical copy of their product catalogue and this was um, almost a novelty in this day and age to have a physical catalogue. I'd love to see something like this from Celestron. Uh, there's something very nice about holding a physical copy, uh, but I don't know about the wisdom of printing prices. I'm not sure any of these prices are still correct. But this video is all about Annals of the Deep Sky. I sincerely believe that this could be the best astronomy reference book you can buy. I was really disappointed when Wilman Bell, the original publisher of this series, announced that they were closing shop, which put the whole project at risk. Uh, by that stage, I'd already collected, I think, six of them, six or seven. It's co-authored by Jeff Kniep and, and Dennis Webb, although Dennis hasn't been on the credits since number seven. Seven, eight, nine, and now ten are all Jeffrey Kniep. Kniep? Canapé? Sorry, Jeff. Great admirer of your work, but I I've clearly don't know how to say your surname. Um, this one, this edition nine was particularly spectacular because it's all about the Magellanic Clouds. Comes with a map, definitely not something I really need, but uh, really useful reference. And I say that because every time I go to take a photo of something particularly exotic, in order to find out what's going on in that particular photo, it takes time to dig through the NASA paper database. I'll go to NASA ADS to do a search to see if I can find what the latest sort of research is around these targets. 
because you can't generally find information about specific nebulae and galaxies just by Googling. The Wikipedia pages have a bit of a glancing overview, but they don't really deep dive into it. Do I have dust on this? For example, the other day when I did an image of the Southern Seagull Nebula, Wikipedia was basically almost empty. But this had not only all of the things that were going on in that region, it had in-depth research and references to the research to explain what was happening or what we don't know or the mysteries involved in that particular object. As a reference, these guides are incredible. And the fact that they're only up to 10 now, look, it's quite a significant collection. And it's definitely one that I will continue to, uh, to buy as they publish them. As long as they keep publishing, from what I understand, they, they transferred the publishing rights and the IP to the American Astronomical Society. Is that right? Yeah, the American Astronomical Society took over the job of publishing and continuing the project, which is fantastic. And Jeff has continued to write. But you will notice a price increase on the latest editions. I can't even link the show sponsor, the normal show sponsor, High Point Scientific, because if you go and search annals, in their search box. Remember, there's two ends there, no results. Uh, Bintel in Australia have been stocking them. I can't link to Amazon. I don't think it's on Amazon. Let me check. Yeah, Amazon only show volume one, two, and three. They don't show any of the recent editions. So this question arises of what's happening to the publishing world? What's happening to books? And are books necessary or will they be around going forward? I feel like we're experiencing a real drop off in, in the book world in general. These sorts of books that are filled with graphs and references and images are definitely better on a physical copy than a digital reader. Digital readers like Kindle are okay, but they're quite small, they're black and white, and images on them don't show up great. There's still a ways to go for e-ink and e-readers to catch up to proper photographic quality books. Otherwise you're reading on an iPad or a computer anyway. And if you are an author like Jeff and you wanna get your book out on Amazon, you've gotta submit an EPUB version of that book. And then all of the images have to be compressed, like really compressed, because if you put high quality images in, it pushes up the price of the book and you don't make the sales. And so if you have a book that's full of images, like what we need for astronomy books, they just don't fly really well on Amazon or they're priced fairly expensive because they're filled with images. Whereas you can buy the actual physical book for about 50 bucks and have a hard copy with all the images in it. That seems a bit weird to me. They own the AWS infrastructure that serves all of this cloud infrastructure. I don't think it costs them that much money to send a JPEG to your Kindle. I think there could be maybe fair pricing for authors there. But what about you? Do you have any favorite books that you'd like to share in the comments down below? Uh, are there some books that you've found for this hobby for astronomy that have worked really well for you? I can tell you that the uh, the Almanac, I can tell you that the Almanac, Astronomy 2024 and every year preceding, it, it, it basically lives here on my desk because I refer to it so much. I really lament the death of Australian Sky and Telescope. I bought that religiously every month, um, but I do look forward to continued editions of Annals Annals of the Deep Sky. If you haven't seen this series of books, let me give you a quick preview. So here's a section on the Small Magellanic Cloud, uh, and it goes through every region, every cluster, every group of stars, every nebula, and they're broken down by the NGC number. Really exotic, basically invisible stuff. Stuff that you generally can't even see with uh, consumer level telescopes unless you're doing some deep exposures. Uh, so every exotic target is in here, but it also does a full on deep dive into the science of everything. We're used to talking about nebulas as star forming regions. This will go so much more in depth to all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. And they'll really give you some insights into the stuff that we're taking photos of. These books are a fantastic reference and I highly recommend them. So, uh, there's no sponsor to this video. There's no affiliate links or anything like that. You just have to buy them from the American society, but I still recommend them and I will continue to buy them even at the higher price. That's it. That's the video. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff and remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.